Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to go over how to create comparison charts in Excel. So whether you want to compare sales against expenses, against profits, or if you want to see how much of revenue a certain product contributed, I'm going to show you how you can do that. So there's a number of common charts um, that you can use in Excel. I mean, there's no, there's, there's plenty of options for you to choose from. I'm going to show you some of the more common ones and may, when you may want to use e each one of them. So to start with, I'm going to start, I'm going to begin with one of the more common charts and that is the standard um, column chart. So I'm going to look at sales versus expenses versus profits. And so if I just select anywhere on this table here, I'm going to go to insert and we can see this column chart right there. So select uh, just a standard 2D one, you can select 3D. The one thing you want to make sure when you're selecting charts is there's these regular clus clustered column charts and there's also these stacked ones. And so just be careful with the stacked ones because they are going to stack on top of uh, your results. So when you're doing comparisons, you're going to want just the regular clustered column chart the regular 3D cluster column chart, you want to avoid these stacked ones because you don't want to add expenses on top of revenue, on top of profit, right? We're just doing comparison. So in that case, you want to go simple, just keep it with the regular column chart. Now, one problem here is Excel, it, it tries to detect the, the data correctly, but you know, it doesn't always work out that way, just based on how the data is structured, because I've got a header in here, that's probably throwing it off, but we can modify this because what's happening here is it's including the year in this uh, in this chart, which obviously doesn't make sense. So I'm going to right click, select data, and I'm going to remove this year, remove that year. And what I'm going to do on the horizontal, the category axis, this is where I'm going to include the years. These are the labels. Now my chart makes a lot more sense. Now we see sales, expenses, and profit, and you know. The benefit of using a column chart here is that you can accomplish two things. One, you can see the overall trending of you know each one of these items individually. You can look at sales individually, expenses individually, profits individually. See, you know, okay, how are they how are they progressing? And you can also compare them in relation to one another. Like here we saw, you know, the expenses and profits were pretty similar to one another. Here there's a much bigger gap, right? So expenses have increased at a much faster rate than profits have here. So there's multiple different things you can look at when you're doing a comparison chart. And that's one of the things that, you know, makes a column chart really useful is it's easy to display all of that data in, in one picture. You can do multiple types of analysis. Now, as far as, you know, visually adjusting your chart to, to make it look how you want, there's a lot of changes you can do. You can change the color. Um, but Excel also has many chart styles here that you can select from. So, you know, you can hover over them, see what, see what you like, what sort of uh, background, what kind of effects you like, and you can say, okay, you know, I can use that. And even if you only like parts of it, you can use that as a starting point and then say, okay, I'm gonna make my, my changes to it, whatever, whatever it is they, they be, I add labels, so on and so forth, right? So a column chart is really your standard, your basic default chart in Excel. Um, it gets the job done, not terribly exciting though. So I'm going to show you another option and that is uh, using the the bar chart, which is basically the same thing as a column chart, but it's, it's going horizontally rather than vertically. So to change my chart type, I can just right click, change chart type. And this gets me back to the screen where I'm selecting my chart. So this would be the same as if you go to insert and select a chart and make your selection. So uh, the benefit of doing it this way is, as you can see, you, you have a preview of what your data is going to look like. So this is, you know, uh, the different views that you would have. So I'm going to go down to bar, and you can see bars going horizontally. Same thing as the column, just basically flipped horizontally. So this is that that clustered one that I'm going to select, and now I've got the same same effect here. Now the one thing that's a little different here is I've got profits, then expenses, then sales. I would prefer to see that the other way. I prefer to see the, the larger item, the sa sales item on the outside, then expenses, then profit. So again, I can right click, select data, and I can just move these around. So if I don't like the order, again, I can move sales down. 
right now let's move profits as well so now I've got the largest smaller smallest effect so you can move these around and that'll adjust uh, to how, how you want your um, your chart to look like so again we can go into the chart styles and see if there's a different effect we prefer or a different layout it's going to be pretty comparable to the column charts but still you may want to just have a look to see if there's something else you prefer and use that as your as your starting point. Now the main reason why you may want to use a, a bar chart rather than a column chart is if you've got field names that have long descriptions. Like right now I don't have long descriptions here. These are just the years, so I mean four characters long, not taking up to, uh, a lot of space. But you know, let's say you had a really long field name here, right? This is where you'd want to use a column, uh, a bar chart, sorry, rather than a column chart because it's a lot easier to make room horizontally. Whereas if you've got a column chart going up and down, you know, to try to fit in a long description in here, you know, it's gonna, gonna be a bit more challenging. You may have to angle it differently. And so it's, it's, it's a bit tighter in that respect. So if you've got long field names, then you may wanna opt for a bar chart just because you've got a lot more room here that, you know, you can stretch this out, you know, and you still aren't losing any a whole lot of information by shrinking this or expanding this so a bar chart can be a bit more flexible in that case but other than that between a bar chart and a column chart they're they're pretty interchangeable not a whole lot of reason otherwise why you may, might, might select one over the other but you know if you're creating a, a dashboard or some sort of summary report and you've got a bunch of standard uh, column charts you may just want it for the sake of changing it up a little bit you know, have a different visual, have a bar chart in there just to change it up a bit. Now, another thing you can do is use a line chart. That's also really popular when you're doing comparisons. So let's go change the chart type again. Right click, change chart type, and let's go up to the line chart. So this is really good for comparison purposes. Again, it's got your stacked options as well, so be careful um, not to select stacked, especially if you're you're doing one-to-one -one comparisons and if you don't mean to stack them so there's your basic line chart and there's also a line chart that has markers in them so if you want that effect on there you can do that select OK and there we've got our line chart so not not a terribly exciting chart but you know it's effective for for trending you know you want to see the patterns and again you can still do the same thing as comparing the the relation of how far apart these these values are. If we go to chart design again, we've got a lot of different styles that we can select from. You know, whichever one you think looks nice. So a lot of options here to to customize it. So if you want to see the values, for instance, with the labels, you know, even more information. And you can also change the color scheme as well. So if there's a certain um, certain colors that you want to use, um, you don't want to potentially go in and change them all by yourself one by one you can look at some of these um, setups they already have in here but other than that the line chart again is a pretty basic one I find it's most effective if you've got fluctuations in your data because right now this is just a pretty linear uh, chart there's really not a whole lot going on but let's say we had a big fluctuation one year right where things went down you know so it's a lot uh, a lot more interesting in that sense because then you can see that fluctuation a, l a lot more clearly on on a line chart but again just another tool that you can use uh, as far as a visual to you know differentiate one chart from another but line charts would be predominantly if you're if you're looking at trending what the long-term picture looks like um, but it's still useful for comparisons as well to see you know you know what rate was this increasing versus this line and so on and so forth another good chart for comparisons that's really really popular is a pie chart. Now a pie chart isn't going to be helpful in this case with sales and expenses and profit but it can be helpful when you're comparing individual sales. Like let's say I've got five different products here they all contributed a different amount of sales I want to see what piece of the pie each one contributed. So if I go to insert you can see I've got a pie chart in here just select a 2D pie there's also a 3D pie and there's also a donut which shows uh, a bit of the same thing, right? So it shows you different breakdowns. So all sort of similar in that respect. It really just depends um, what effect you're looking for. So I'll just stick with the standard pie chart here. 
And the one thing that uh, I do like to change with pie charts is these labels right here. Because if you've got a lot of items, it can be hard to determine what color relates to what slice, right? Especially if you, you've got something like this where you've got different shades of blue, right? I mean, you can, you can figure out that, okay, the first one relates to this first slice, okay, but it's, it can be hard to tell the, these differences, right? They're, they can be very subtle, especially when you're using similar colors. So what I prefer to do is, in this case, use, use labels. And so right here, you know, there are a lot of different chart formats that you can select here that already have labels. You can, of course, add them manually. But something like this where you have the percentage right in there. And what I like to do is right-click, format these data labels, so we can add a bit more information, such as the category name. So now we can see, okay, this is product one, this is product two, this is product three. And so there's no no having to go back to the legend and see, okay, what was this item, what was that one? Instead, just delete this, and we've got a pie chart that tells you all that information. And you can see both visually the size of the slice and as well, um, you know, the, see the percentage as well in, in numbers. So you can see it from, from both angles. And you can format the data labels if you want them, let's see, outside so they're not interfering with your with your pie chart. But as you can see, that's the main benefit of, of a pie chart is when you're doing, um, you want to see how how different pieces add up to a, to a whole or, you know, the makeup of the, the sales of different products. That's where a pie chart can be really helpful is it uh, it does this you can accomplish this obviously with uh, a bar chart or a column chart as well but you know pie charts stand out a bit more and if you have an opportunity to use them i was just doing so just because with column charts and bar charts you can you can plot a lot of different things pie charts don't work for a lot of cases like you wouldn't use these to show you know month over month sales growth right it wouldn't really uh, be effective so if you have an opportunity i would say uh, use a pie chart just because it can help you help your data uh, stand out a little more your your visualization if there's an opportunity to do so um, but that's that's in a nutshell some of the main um, comparison charts you'll use bar charts and column charts are kind of your defaults whether you want to look at the data vertically you may want to use a column chart if you've got large field names you may want to opt for a bar chart if you're looking at a, a long-term trend, then you may want to opt for a line chart. And if you're comparing one product versus another or one product versus the total amount of sales, then a pie chart would be uh, a better option in that case. So that's a quick overview of four of the more common types of charts you can use for comparison purposes. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for, wa thanks for watching.